Hi guys, welcome once again to a Gaz Labs little video. Today I'm playing with some aluminium box and a 9 to 1 ballon. Now um, a few people have asked me maybe that I would they wanted me to make a few things and that's absolutely fine, I can do that. Um, in fact, probably in the future I'll make a few more things. Unfortunately, um, right at this pre precise moment, I don't have facilities to weld anymore or do any sort of like real sort of hardcore uh, fabrication. Um, that won't always be the case. Um, in the future, um, I'm actually working on sort of something where maybe I can actually introduce maybe just a little bit of blacksmithing. I don't know if you'll be into that, but it might be a bit of fun. Um, um, and obviously um, going forward, who knows if I can if I can get it sort of sorted out, um, you know, sort of soon. I'll I'll maybe have the facility to maybe do a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit of TIG welding as well. So maybe there might be just a little bit of fabrication. But in the meantime, I've got a 3D printer which I'm hoping to use a little bit more, and um, I have. You know, I've got a spare room upstairs, which I kind of use as like a makeshift like little workshop. I can do small projects, you know, basically sort of model making sort of sizes, which isn't too bad. You know, I've got like a portable drill press thing that I can use. So maybe going forward, I'll do a little bit if that's if that's what people are interested in. Hopefully they might be because it's something that I know extremely well. So anyway, so today I was going to talk about if you're working with um, project boxes and how to make holes in them, how to mark them out and that sort of stuff. Um, so let's have a quick look at the, what I've got in my hand. Right, well, number one, okay, you'll see here that I've I've marked something out here. Um, you can actually see now I've used a scriber. Um, actually, did I use a scriber? I don't know, um, possibly. Well, um, if you don't know what a scriber is, it's um, it's basically like a, a, a metal worker's pen. It's a sharp um, implement and you can actually basically, you know, sort of scrape sort of stuff on there. Probably with aluminium, I've cheated. Um, I've got a cheap set of, um, of verniers here, um, which all I've done is I've used them as a scratch gauge. Um, I've worked out roughly where I want it. Okay, and I've just put a little mark, just a gentle mark across the top and then worked out, well, you can see what I've done actually there. I've basically gone center and then almost there. And then just, just put a little gentle mark across. Okay, and that and that is genuinely an, enough. Um, one little point to um, make, if you've got something that is very accurately sort of cut, quite often when you're working with this sort of stuff, you, um, you'll you need sort of like a, a datum edge. Now normally, typically there's two datum edges. Um, you end up maybe with a bottom edge, which will be a datum edge, and you normally would mark it to say that it's datum, um, and you would have, say, another a face edge. And then whatever dimension you put on the face would come off of one of these datum edges. If it's sort of something that's a bit uneven, the datum probably would go up the center. Okay, and then everything would be measured off of the, the center point. So whether it would be, you know, up, down, whatever. Um, and you'd use the datum point to, to kind of mark out the, the, the drilling sort of area. Um, now drilling sheet steel or sheet, sheet aluminium, sheet steel, sheet brass, uh, in particular sheet brass, nasty stuff. Um, if, you, if you're drilling that sort of stuff, you don't really want to use a standard drill bit. Now, I've heard all sorts of um, sort of things where people say, oh, you know, wear gloves, grip hold of it, and um, away you go. Mm, I wouldn't do that. Um, let's uh, put you back on there, GoPro. Um, I wouldn't do that um, because what tends to happen is the material that you're holding gets hold of the glove, gets entangled, and you end up in a right pickle. Um, it's not good. So using a standard drill bit, which is typically sort of one of these sort of things, this is a standard drill bit. If I can get into them. There you go. 
okay for sort of sheet sort of stuff that there is a standard sort of drill bit this is a small one probably okay for that but once you start going over about sort of um, maybe four or five mil going into a standard sort of um, 16 gauge or 18 gauge you know sort of product or 1.6 or 1.2 millimeter um, product around those sort of dims then it can start to snatch so especially if you when you're drilling holes that sort of size um, if you drill that with a, with a standard twist drill that will snatch like bilio um, and it's not ideal I can assure you um, not at all so I don't recommend that the other thing that you're going to need is probably one of these now this is um, what they call a, a like a self um, you know propelling sort of center punch um, these would typically you would see these um, you know used for smashing sort of glass at sort of junkyards and stuff they would just go up to a car and jab it and the window would break um, so these things are they used to be cheap but then they're, they're no longer I think these come in I mean I have got a whopper as well which I use a lot but these typically now are about 40 to 50 quid um, depending on which one this is an eclipse one this I've had this for a very long time um, possibly even um, probably I don't know 35 years getting on for um, that thing so there you go so the other thing that you're going to need to make it sort of safe for you to, to drill into this sort of stuff and I'll show you it now is something called a step drill and this is a, um, a reasonably good sort of step drill and um, you can see what happens it sort of drills down until you get the right sort of size hole that you want um, now the reason why you would use one of these is because it doesn't have a like a running flute like a standard drill bit if you look at um, if you look at one of these that's got a running flute and what happens is you get kind of two lugs that build up and then as this sort of shoots through it then winds itself in and that's when it gets caught up and you end up in a, in a bit of a tangle with the drill and the, and the drill bit whereas this doesn't have that this will basically ease a, a hole through um, to the point where you can actually then just work it out until you need it and then job done so I really recommend these okay these are very very good something like this one will cost you um, typically it's about one pound fifty to one pound to one pound fifty a millimeter so something like this might be about 35 quid something like that um, one of those very very good um, I do recommend a good set of um, varineers as well for marking this sort of stuff out um, so this is um, quite an old set I prefer the manual set I don't like the uh, digital sets uh, all right they're easy to read um, but these are these are as easy to read that there's nothing complicated about them um, but the good thing with these is that they, they don't break um, and these are cheap I mean you can get a good set of these from Mitutoyu for like probably even 30 40 quid off of eBay um, and you know even 21 quid and the, they're absolutely brilliant really really good in fact I've got a set of those somewhere there you go there you go these are the Mr. Two year ones so there you go um, and those are really really lovely I'll just get it in there in the somehow um, they are nice very very nice indeed thoroughly recommend them um, so yeah so there you go I, like I said I, don't, I just don't like the digital things um, here the I've got the other end of the box and I've done exactly the same thing now the the one thing that I would say to you is um, that really make sure when you're drilling all this sort of stuff you've got this clamped down um, you know safely so that you can drill it without actually um, you know hurting yourself over the back here I've got one of these sort of like uh, vices um, like an angle type vice and I do everything like this up here um, you know in the house so it's all kind of um, you know I, I don't like to go sort of go too wild because um, you know I can't get an angle grinder out in the in the spare room <laughs> or anything like that so yeah it's uh, this this is actually quite a, a neat neat project you know it's small easy to do and I just use a standard sort of um, battery drill so you can if you've got a Royobi or something like that happy days um, 
So what I've done is um, basically I drilled it out for these sort of things to, to go in the side. You can see that. Um, and that will make up the the kind of uh, the, the part of the, 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 the unun. Um, the unun I've actually just wound. Um, this is just rough wound. I'm just playing really. You know, it's nothing not meant to look really, really fantastic. Um, I went through a stage of building sort of things like uh, ununs and uh, just sort of seeing how they turned out um, and using all sorts of weird materials. In fact, I've got another one up there somewhere. I can see it. Can't see it. No, I can't see it. I've got another one which I made up of uh, just start uh, house wiring. Um, and that one works really well, um, I have to say. Um, but what you can do with this, if you've got something like um, like a fiberglass pole, you can just throw a piece of wire up it and just run run one sort of counterpoise out and this will tune across the band. You no know, tune are needed pretty much. Um, so yeah, it's good fun. It's a, it's a jolly good um, little project. You know, all right, it's not going to be perfect, but it will get you on the air. I mean, we managed to work the um, Argentina on, on one of these. Um, with uh with with a elad an elad sdr and on a pub table um just before the the pub landlady came out and started shouting at us uh, you remember that james <laughs> that was really rather um embarrassing um anyway so yeah um yeah the the intention is with this um i'm going to put a feed point you know one of these type things in the base like so and in the top i'm going to put a 3.8 sort of like cb type mount um, and i want to put like a long sort of antenna so this will maybe you know sort of like a whip of some description um, just to see what it does so like a bottom loading coil and um, i will talk a bit more about these things uh, going forward i think but I just kind of wanted to, this is a bit of a tester, just to see whether or not, you know, this is sort of something that would interest um, you guys. Because, um, you know, everyone's got kind of like, um, like a, 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 maybe a little specialist subject and probably, you know, all the, the, the fabricating of things is, uh, is likely to be mine. Um, obviously, there's going to be people out there that know much, much more than me. But, um, and again, I encourage if, if you're one of those just to, leave comments in the bottom because you know i'm eager to learn and uh you know going forward um i might be able to um as i said before i'm sure that um i can maybe get a bit of blacksmithing or something like that as well which you know, i don't know if you'd be interested um still have uh, some of the kit um dotted around and um, with a little bit of um charcoal we can um just have a little bit of a play and it's just good fun um especially when the night starts sort of drawing in just a little bit more and you've got that kind of dust thing and a bit of charcoal going with all the sparks and stuff it looks fantastic um so good fun but anyway so yeah if you're interested then then please leave some comments in there and just let me know what you want to want to make i've got some good ideas for sort of small little projects especially when it comes to small antennas um how well they'll work that I don't know, but they all look good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've, I've, what I'll do is also I'll dig some other things out as well and I'll show you what I've made in the past. Um, not always successful, um, but they are interesting, um, to say the least. Um, one particular is an EH antenna for um, 14 megs and it's this big. I don't know if I can get that in there in the frame. So it's that big it's tiny um really works well on receive i mean amazingly well tx is probably another story but uh, it's worth having a little look at but you know let's have a let's have a play if you're interested let me know in the comments um i'd be intrigued to know whether or not you're interested thanks for watching and i'll see you soon bye <laughs>